why does the LA Jewish Symphony exist? Why am I recreating Jewish music? Why am I in this niche? The Jewish repertoire somehow is felt at a soul level, at a kishka level. There is a different feeling about it. I was born in Los Angeles. Um, my mother was actually a native. My father was born in Brooklyn. Music was very integral to our growing up. My brother started violin when he was three. I started piano at five. I loved accompanying and I loved being in the choir. And I loved having Jewish music as part of my whole growing up. For me, music was also my social outlet. And, and I was good, and, and in my last year of high school, I learned how to conduct a rehearsal. I remember thinking, oh, this is so cool, I wanna do this, you know? <laughs> so I ended up doing it. I went to college at uh, University of Pacific in Stockton, California. The choral director up there was Dr. William Denning, who was a star in his own right. He inspired a lot of great choral conductors, so, I spent four years there. It was all in those formative years till I then decided to go back and get my master's. I went to Cal State Northridge and I picked Cal State Northridge because of the choral director there, John Alexander, and his reputation. And immediately he made me his assistant and I was a TA there for two years and I loved teaching college. And here I was, I was an assistant teacher teaching college. But I knew if I wanted a tenure position, I'd have to get a doctorate and I got into USC on the recommendation of Danning and John Alexander. I ended up at a concert at Royce Hall that Roger Wagner was conducting on the music of David Novikovsky. I knew two pieces by David Novikovsky that we did for Slichot, right, that was it. And here, there was a full concert with orchestra, with choir, with soloists of the music of David Novikovsky. And I was blown away. I had never heard anything like it. I, I didn't know this kind of Jewish music existed. I, I just was stunned through the whole concert. I did all my research in, on the music of Novikovsky, and I decided I wanted to explore instrumental music on a more grandiose scale. So I applied to the Aspen Music School in the summer music program and was accepted as one of the conductors there. My teacher there was Murray Sidlim. So I thought, okay, well, I'm starting this Jewish music. I'll do a concert of Jewish music. And Murray came to this concert. There, it was packed out, nobody could get in. And he sat me down, he said, Noreen, this is your niche. This is what you need to do. There's an orchestra on every corner in Los Angeles, but you need to start a Jewish orchestra. And you need to do it at the highest level. I told my husband about this encounter, and, he's, and he said, let's do it. It'll be our tzedakah. It'll be our way of contributing to the Los Angeles Jewish community. When I first started the Los Angeles Jewish Symphony, there was nothing else like it. We're not under a larger umbrella, under a synagogue or a, an organization. We're a standalone orchestra, and it's very hard to keep the momentum going and, and to get an audience to come. We try to keep our ticket prices low so that everybody can come, and we reach out to the other all the time. We're reaching out to collaborate. So some of my most wonderful collaborations have been with gospel choirs, have been with church choirs, have been with organizations that don't know about Judaism. And by working through the music, we bring them together. I applied to the NEA, the National Endowment of the Arts, to do a program called Patchwork of Cultures, using Sephardic music as the bridge between the Latino and the Jewish culture. I got the grant. So every year we do the Patchwork of Cultures. It's for third, fourth, and fifth graders. And here are these Latino kids coming to a concert. This is a thousand kids every year we do this for. A thousand kids come in to a synagogue, which they've never been before. Some of them have, have never even uh, heard an orchestra before. So they're hearing an orchestra. They're going to a Jewish synagogue. The rabbi is explaining what the Torah is, what the eternal light is, what, it, what is it that they're seeing, and then they hear the music that they've studied. So I'm very proud of the music education program. Choosing repertoire, it's like 
I have these ideas in my head. People send me music. I'm getting music all the time. I mean, since I got this award, I was top 30 in the Musical America, so it's like an international award. It just goes out to everybody. And I'm, I keep getting more and more and more music. Will you perform my stuff? Will you perform my grandfather's stuff? I found this piece of music. It's unbelievable how much stuff is out there. What I think is important to do is a little bit of the familiar and a little bit of the news so that you're always challenging your listeners. I must look at the Milken Archive at least twice a month. And when I'm in research, I look at it every day. But just, just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Eric Zeisel has become a very big um, person in my life as a Jewish conductor. He came from Vienna and was part of the studios and part of the LA culture in the 40s and 50s. I've had a kind of this fascination with his music. So we're at uh, the Gindi Auditorium and we're going to be um, rehearsing for our live concert on Sunday. The Jacob and Rachel Ballet is first. I think the audience is going to be mesmerized by the music and the ballet and the interpretation of this very famous bi biblical story. And um, I think they'll be entertained, I think they'll be educated, and I think they will be moved. Noreen and I have uh, known each other for a long time, uh, really throughout the course of the LA Jewish Symphony's history, and she really has uh, a terrific sensibility for Jewish music and classical music. Uh, together, and so it's a perfect fit for her to be conducting my grandfather Eric Zeisel's music. That big crescendo, and you can even uh, slide down to it. Bam! Ba -ba -ba. very significant. It's uh, my father's ballet. Uh, he wrote it, I think, when I was around 11. I just heard my father compose it on the piano, never with orchestra and uh, never on stage. So it's particularly wonderful for me. <laughs> well, seems like we've got our balance figured out and we, our new players are fitting into our, our recording and uh, we're very happy. And we're happy to be here at the Gindi. So it's going to be a good show. People say, what is your purpose in life? My purpose on earth is to use music as a vehicle to bring people together. And I think I'm doing that, and I want to continue to do that, and it's the most gratifying thing that I do. <laughs>